This video is for section 1.1c problems, and in it we're going to learn how to find the arc length in radians, the area of a sector in radians, and then also how to find linear and angular speeds. To start, I'm going to show you how we get arc length uh, using radians, and we're going to start with a circle where it has a radius r, we're calling the central angle theta, and if you notice the arc length is called s. So we have an equation for arc length that says s equals r theta. However, why does s equal r theta? Let's take a look at that. We're going to go back to our geometry. Now if you recall in geometry, when we found arc length, we actually took a fraction or a ratio or percentage, whatever you uh, might want to call that, of the total circumference of the circle. And the circumference is the distance around the circle. And remember that circumference is pi times d, so pi times the diameter. And if you're using the radius, you could instead say 2 pi times the radius, since the diameter is, is twice as long as the radius. So we have this arc length. We take our degree of our, of our angle, and we divided it by 360 and multiplied it by the circumference, 2 pi r. Now for radians, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to put it in radian form. So we're going to let arc length equal s as above. The angle is theta. And remember that 360 degrees is equal to going around the circle in full, which is also 2 pi. We're going to multiply that by 2 pi r. Remember, that's our circumference equation. And if you notice, the 2 pi's can cancel out if we were to simplify that equation. So we're left with s equals theta times r. And if you use your commutative property, which means flip those around, I get s equals r times theta. There's your equation to find the arc length of a circle in radians. So next, we're going to look at an example. So we're going to find the arc length in this example where a circle has a radius of 4 inches. We're going to find the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 240 degrees. So the first thing we need to do is convert that 240 degrees to radians. So we're going to learn um, using our conversions from yesterday or today, 240 degrees times pi over 180. That reduces to 4 pi over 360 actually goes into both 240 and 180. So our angle then is 4 pi over 3. Now we can, now that we have our degrees in radians, we can use s equals r theta to find the arc length in radians. So here we go. We have s equals r radius, which is 4 inches from above, up in there where it says a circle has a radius of 4 inches. Theta is 4 pi over 3. That's our angle. When you multiply that, you get 16 pi over 3. And then we put into an approximation, a decimal approximation, which is 16.76 inches. If you wanted an exact answer, you could leave it as 16 pi over 3 inches. It just depends how the book is going to give it to you. And if I specify an exact answer, you want to leave it in terms of pi. Next thing we're going to do is develop the area of a sector in radians. So we're going to use that same circle with radius r. The area of the, se of the sector we're going to call A. The central angle is theta again. And this time they give us the formula A equals r squared theta. Theta is the measure in radians. So again, I'm going to ask the question, why? Why is the area of a sector in radians 1 half r squared theta? So let's go back to our geometry. And again, we're going to use that idea that when we find the area of a sector, it's a piece of a circle. So we're going to find a fraction of that circle and multiply it by the area of the circle. A fraction, a ratio, a percent, however you want to say that, we're taking a part, a fractional part of that circle. So in geometry, we took the degree of the angle, the central angle divided by 360, and we multiplied it by area, pi r squared. Remember, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Now remember, we're calling the area of the sector A, the degree is our angle theta, and 360 degrees in radians is the same as 2 pi. So we're going to write that out. Area equals theta divided by 2 pi. Again, 2 pi is equivalent to 60, 360 degrees. We're going to multiply that by pi r squared. Notice the pi's cancel out. That gives me theta over 2 times r squared. And just simplifying that a little bit. Remember, theta over 2 is the same as 1 half. So I can make it look like the equation above by changing that to 1 half put the r squared in, I'm just using my commutative property there, and then theta. So there's the formula. So the idea of these is that there's no secret to them, they're not just being pulled out of thin air, but all of these formulas you're getting have actually been developed from previous things that we have learned. 
Let's look at an example of how to find, uh, of getting the area of a sector next. So for this one, we have a sprinkler on a golf course fairway. It's set to spray water over a distance of 70 feet. That's what you'll see, those little dots. It's supposed to be a little sprinkler head in there, you know, spraying water. It rotates through an angle of 120 degrees. We're going to find the area of that fairway being watered by that sprinkler. So we're going to take that angle measure that we have, 120, and we want it in radians because we're working in radians for these problems. So we're going to convert it according to our conversions we learned today. So 120 times pi over 180. 60 goes into both of those, so it reduces to 2 and 3. So we have 2 pi over 3 radians. That's our measure of our angle theta. Okay, we're now going to put that into our area for 1 half r squared theta. And if you notice, I put 70 feet on the radius. So I have 1 half. The radius from up above is 70 feet. I square it. I put in my angle measure in radians, 2 pi over 3. 70 squared is 4,900 pi divided by 3. And then if you want to estimate what that is, go ahead and put it in your calculator, and you'll get approximately, so I put little squigglies there on my equal, 5,131 feet squared. If I asked you for an exact answer, you just leave it as 4,900 over 3 divided by pi. In the next examples, we're going to talk about linear speed and angular speed. So we're going to consider a particle that's moving at a constant speed above a circular arc of radius r. And linear speed measures how fast the particle moves. So to calculate linear speed, they call it v. We can use v equals the arc length over time. Arc length, remember, is s, so s over t. But why? Recall our equation from previous years that distance equals rate times time. Distance is equivalent to arc length. Linear speed is equivalent to the rate. So we could write arc length equals linear speed times time. To get the linear speed by itself, we're going to divide both sides by time, just as shown below. So the times will cancel out on the right side. I have arc length over time. Remember, arc length is s. So I have s over t, linear speed is called v. So that's where s over t equals v, and I just used my symmetric property to make it look like the equation up on top, that v equals s oh, divided by t. Let's look at an example that goes with that. Actually, let's look at this, let's talk about angular speed first. So we still have that same particle moving at a constant speed along a circular angle, but theta is going to be the angle and radian measure. Arc length is still s. When we talk about angular speed, we call it omega, so that little w there. And it can be found by using angular speed, or omega, equals central angle over time. So if you think about the distance, again, distance equals rate times time. Angular speed is equivalent to your rate. Central angle is equivalent to your distance. Okay, that's how far the angle is traveling, so it's the angle degree. And so we can say that the central angle equals the angular speed times time. Now divide both sides by time, those times will cancel out, and you're with, left with the central angle, which is theta, over time, equals the angular speed, which is omega, or when I use my symmetric property, omega equals theta divided by t. Let's look at a couple examples now. We have this example that says the second half of a clock is 10.2 centimeters long. We're going to find the linear speed of the tip of the second hand as it passes around the clock face. Remember, linear speed, v, equals s over t. We need to find the arc length that, uh, first to find that linear speed. So the arc length going all the way around the circle once for a second hand is the circumference. And remember, circumference is 2 pi r. Okay? We're going to take the radius. The, since the second hand is 10.2, that represents the radius of that circle, or in particular, that clock. And we're going to plug that into s equals 2 pi times 10.2, and it gives me 20.4, 20.4 pi centimeters. Now, look what I wrote on the bottom. Since it takes exactly one minute or 60 seconds for the second hand to go around the face of the clock once, I took 20.4 pi, divided it by 60 seconds. And so once I divide that out, it gives me approximately 1.068 centimeters per second. Let's look at one more example. We have a Ferris wheel with a 50-foot radius that makes 1.5 revolutions per minute. We're going to find the angular speed of the Ferris wheel in radians per minute and then the linear speed. 
So for the angular speed, we're going to think about revolutions. And remember, each revolution one time around is 2 pi radians. So if I take 1.5 revolutions, I'm going to multiply that by 2 pi radians. That's going to give me 3 pi radians. Now remember, I'm saying revolutions, and rev each one revolution is all the way around, which is 2 pi. All right, so angular speed equals omega equals theta, the angle, central angle, divided by time. And in this case, time equals one minute. So we're going to take 3 pi. We have 3 pi radians. We're going to divide it by one minute. And I can just write that as 3 pi radians per minute. Now, if I want to find the linear speed, again, we know that V equals the arc length over time, so S over T. And remember, S equals your radius times your central angle. So S equals R times theta. That equals 50 feet, because if we go to that Ferris wheel, they told us the Ferris wheel had a radius of 50 feet. So 50 feet times 3 pi for the angle, theta, gives me 150 pi feet. And for finding the linear speed, it's V equals the arc length over time. So 150 pi feet over one minute. And if you divide that out, you get approximately 471.2 feet per minute. All right, this should be able to help you finish up those examples, um, enough examples to help you finish up the problems. We'll check for understanding one more in class. All right, good luck.